Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in this Bigot series. In this video, I will be showing you how you can add configuration to your database plugins. I feel like when I'm with you, I'm losing. I feel like you think that this amusing. Sitting there gaslighting and confusing. Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? Alright guys, welcome back. In the last few episodes, we learned how to make our first database plugin, or rather a plugin that uses a MySQL database. And that worked very fine, except that there's one thing that we need to be able to do, which is make it so that the user of the plugin can specify the connection details for their database. Because not everyone who uses your plugin will have a MySQL database on their computer or wherever they're hosting the server. So they may have some MySQL server somewhere else, like on some other hosting service or just some other place. And you need to be able to allow them to specify the user and password and host name and all that stuff for their database and then you can then use that to connect to the database and then populate it with data and all that fun stuff all right so let's see how we can do that with our current setup here so first we're going to make a config.yml file this is where the player or not the player the server owner will be able to set up the database configuration options so config.yml we're going to be needing a host a port a user and a password and a database name so first of all, the host is going to be localhost as the default, but obviously they will want to change that if they don't have a database set up locally. And then port is going to be 3306. That's the default MySQL server port for pretty much any MySQL server. Then you have user. That's going to be root by default, as you know. And the password, there is no password, so we'll leave it blank. And then finally, database name. In this case, we called it stat tracker when we created it locally. But we can give the server owner the option to have a different database name. So uh, stat tracker will just be the defaults, but they can change that if they want to. So in this case, what the server owner will need to do when they install your plugin is obviously put it into the plugins folder. And then when the server starts up for the first time with your plugin, it'll generate your config.yml, obviously, with these default values. So what they will need to do is go to their MySQL database, wherever that is, create a new database with whatever name they want, like stat tracker. And then they can go into your config.yml, put the host, port, user, password, and database name, press save, reload, and now it should work. Hopefully if they put the correct details in your plugin should work with those details um, and connect to the database using JDBC. But we need to complete this process by actually grabbing these values from the config and then using them in our plugin, okay? So in database, this is where we actually do all the connection stuff here. So right now it's hard-coded. So we wanna make it so that instead of having it hard-coded, we actually grab it. So what we're gonna do is actually add some values here. So whenever we create a new database, uh, all these values here will be passed in to the constructor of this class and then stored locally in this class so that we can use it down here. So this will match what we have in the config.yml and I made them capital just because they're final or constants that don't change. So now we'll make a constructor to set those values. So we'll do public or we can just generate it. So code generates constructor select all of these except for a connection actually, click OK. And then now whenever you create a new object of database, you'll pass in those values. So we're gonna go back to our stat tracker main class here and this is where you pass in the values. So to be able to pass in the values, obviously we need to grab them, right? So first we're going to do save default config to actually allow us to use config.yml. And then now we can then do git config and then grab each of the values one by one. So git config dot git string host or database.host, right? That's what it is. Database.host, that's how you select that. And then repeat the process for the rest of those. There we go, so I just filled that out for you so you didn't have to watch, watch me type all that. And we can make this more easy to look at just by putting everything on a new line here. Boom, 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 and boom. So there we go, that's pretty easy, pretty simple. So we're just setting up the config.yml with this and then grabbing the values from the config.yml and then creating a new database object. And inside of here, it's gonna set these values, which are then used to create a new connection to the database. But obviously we need to now change this part to actually use these values, because right now they're not actually used. So we'll start with this one, we can get rid of these, and instead of using those, we can do this dot user, and then this dot password. Awesome. And then now for the URL, or URI, whatever you wanna call it, uh, we can leave this, because it's still a MySQL database and we're connecting to it with JDBC, but this part we want to change. So we'll do this.host slash and then the database name. There we go. And now hopefully if we did everything correctly, it should uh, be able to connect to the database. And we'll test that in a second. But I just want to say before we do that, obviously you notice that MySQL is hard-coded into this. 
So with this current approach, um, the user of the plugin will not be able to use different types of databases like a SQLite database or some other database implementation. And that, as I have seen, I think a few times, is something that certain plugins do allow. They let you choose different types of databases. And that's up to you if you want to support that. All you got to do is add an option to your config.yml, allowing the user to specify what database implementation they want to use. So let me just give you an example. If you want to have a plugin that supports both MySQL and SQLite, then you can simply have something like um, type. And the only two options for this could be like, you know, whatever you define, such as MySQL or SQLite. And then when you start up the plugin, you just grab that, see what the value is, and then therefore use that to know what to provide here for your um, JDBC connection string, okay? I'll definitely be showing that in the future. Just stay tuned if you're curious on how to do that. But that's how you would do it if you just want to start it now. Um, it's really up to you how you want to define that logic. But anyway, now that we have this and it's actually grabbing the values from the config, hopefully it'll be able to connect. So I'm going to test this out now on the server and I'll be right back. Okie dokie, the server is started now. So let's see if they're, uh, so let's see if it connected correctly or not. So we'll find stat tracker and it says connected to database. Awesome. And yeah, make sure you have your local database running so that it actually connects to it with the default values. So there you go. That's how you can add configuration options for your plugins to allow the users to specify their connection details for their database so, so that your plugin can connect to it and do whatever it needs to do. All you would need to expect the server owner to be able to do is make a MySQL server somewhere, connect to it using PHP My Admin, and then create a database called, you know, whatever they want to call it for that so that your plugin can connect to it and then set that database name in the config.yml along with the connection details such as the user, password, host, and ports. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. And stay tuned for the next episode. Peace.